Uh, it's October 2nd, 2021. This is Dwyer of DwyerCrime.blog. They had one of the better 48-hour shows this evening involving Jasmine Harton's shooting of Police Chief Henry Jemot. Right, Jasmine Harton is a mother of two whose partner, she wasn't married to him, but they were together. Right, her partner, of course, is the son of a billionaire. Let's just say she comes from money. Henry Jemot is a father of five. He was operating on a police chief's salary in Belize. Right? Well, understand. Jasmine Harton sat down with 48 hours and tried to unring the bell. Right? When someone gives false statements, let's be clear here. When someone lies to the police about a shooting that has left their companion dead, Sometimes the cover-up is worse than the crime. Some people, let me raise my hand, are going to believe that the initial lie is the result of a consciousness of guilt. Now in this case, and we'll get to it, Jasmine Harton gives a whopper of a lie to the police initially. They mention it on 48 Hours, but when they interview Jasmine Harton, they don't talk to her about it. It's a missed opportunity because it goes to the heart of the case. Right? Jasmine Harton does tell 48 Hours that she was confused. She wasn't quite sure what happened. Folks, that's a poor excuse for the extent of the lie she told. So the 48 Hours episode is really an exercise in Jasmine Harton after consulting with her legal team. It's clear she consults with lawyers doing her best to back away from her initial lie to police and to make the facts fit a more innocent explanation as to how she could be out with the police chief in the dark by the water on a pier and how the police chief could end up shot in the head right by the back of his ear Let's talk about it. Now, Harton, who's the only person left alive out of the two, right? And who, of course, as I said, was involved with a life partner who she had two kids with, twins, right? Harton calls the police chief because she needs a friend. Right? Because this guy and her had a friendship. She claims they were never physically intimate. Just understand it's clear that they were emotionally intimate. She had confided to him earlier that some man who was not identified on 48 hours had tried to be too physical with her. That she was worried. And so the police chief suggested to her that she get a firearm license. That she take the steps needed to legally have a gun. Because the police chief was concerned for her safety. So of course, on the day that the police chief ends up dead, she calls the police chief. She needs a friend. Her relationship with her partner has gone south. Right, folks? 
it's gone so far south that they're right now arguing over custody of their two kids. Well, let's get back to the night of the shooting. She calls the cop who then travels more than an hour to come see her. Now she admits alcohol was involved. That they were out drinking. That they were inebriated. She also admits that this cop who she called, who was her friend, who she contends she was never physically intimate with, that she was actually behind him, in the dark, by the water, right, giving him a massage. Now, of course, the cop has a Glock 17, 9 millimeter weapon on him. Right? His work weapon. It's a handgun. And of course, according to Jasmine Harton, right, the gun is out. The reason the gun's out is the guy is trying to show her how to use the gun. The top cop wants her being comfortable with a gun in the dark. Right? Makes no sense at all. I'm going to show you the gun and make sure that you know how to take the cartridge out in the dark where there are no street lights whatsoever. Well, anyway, somehow. While she's behind him, she's handing him his gun back, according to this version of events. And of course, she's not sure what happened. She is not sure whether her finger was on the trigger. Right? She just hears a bang. And then the guy falls on her. A victim of an accidental shooting. She claims that the guy was a friend. That she had no animus toward him. There was no ill will. They were not arguing. They were two friends having an innocent good time over by the water in the dark. Right? She just happened to be having problems with her partner. Right? She admits she called the cop who she knew had five kids, but that it was all innocent. The fact that the cop gets shot right behind the ear is happenstance. Right? This is that accidental shooting that just happened to be in the wrong place. Right? And so, here's the wrinkle. When the police start investigating the case, she tells the cops, and this is the earlier story that's not focused on, on the 48 Hours episode, in her initial version of events to the police, she claimed that a boat sped by why while they were there right by the water and that a shot rang out from the boat from people she didn't know at her friend and hit her friend behind the ear killing him her initial version doesn't have her holding the gun doesn't have her shooting her companion. That's missing from the initial version. And so then, of course, the cops start questioning her about the cocaine that was in her purse. Right? So, of course, she changes her story. Faced with drug possession, 
which of course she claims that the drugs belong to someone else, but she doesn't want to identify that person. Right? The drugs that belong to someone else somehow find their way into the purse of this mother of two. Right? But it's after the police pick up the scent of the cocaine in her purse that she changes her story. And we get this story of an accidental shooting that just happens to hit the physically big police chief right in back of his ear. Right? The gun's out innocently. We're supposed to believe that a member of law enforcement, someone trained in the use of firearms, a veteran cop, not a rookie, a top cop, not a rookie, we're supposed to believe that in the dark with a novice, he unstraps his gun, the safety's off. And of course, understand, Glock 17s, <clears throat> as they tell you on 48 Hours, as they show you by having someone who had been involved with the DEA, who was a firearms expert, that person shows you that these Glocks can actually fall down on the floor. They don't go off. The only time they would go off is if someone applies five pounds of pressure to the trigger. We actually see Jasmine Harton, who to me is incredibly rehearsed, but who's also very good. This is the person who can follow the script. We see her when asked by 48 Hours whether her finger was on the trigger. We see her basically say, hey, I don't know. I didn't think it was. In other words, no intent here. Maybe I was negligent. But there was no intent for me to hurt the police chief. Right? And of course, her intention was just to give the gun back to the police chief. So the police chief and her had the kind of relationship where he takes his gun out of the holster and gives it to her. She then is able to move in back of him and give him a massage in the dark and he feels comfortable. Then of course she's giving the gun back to him at such an angle that the gun shoots him right behind the ear. Right? One wonders why she couldn't have passed the gun to him you know, off at the side. If, in fact, you believe her story. So there are a couple other facts that leak out that I think are worthy of mention. The father of her twins, right? Guy who's well-connected, the son of a billionaire. He now is fighting with her over custody. And he claims that she has a drinking problem. He claims that she, they have a hotel together that they own, has been aggressive with hotel staff. Put simply, he doesn't want her unsupervised around their kids. They mention on 48 Hours that she has supervised visitation. Supervised. She sees the kids either every Saturday or every other Saturday. Let's interpret that. In other words, she doesn't see the kids that much. Right? Think about that. There are also films that have surfaced of her at a gun range shooting a rifle. The argument is, hey, this woman knew firearms. This story about her not knowing this Glock 7, 17 uh, is a bit of a reach. Her response is interesting. She says, look, that film of me shooting a rifle 
is from 2012. Right? She also makes the point that, you know, she really doesn't have experience with handguns. That dealing with a handgun is different than dealing with a rifle. Right? Now understand, this news could be interpreted differently. She was handling rifles as far back as 2012. In other words, she had had direct contact with firearms, had fired a firearm several years before the Henry Jamont shooting, or what she calls an accident. So 48 hours is riveting. It's absolutely riveting. Because I believe that Jasmine Harton is a bit too rehearsed on the show. Right? You when you hear an alibi and it just sounds too smooth. Right? Why did the cop give her her gun? Oh, because she had complained earlier to him about some guy being a bit too untoward in her presence right and the cop thought hey you need a firearms license so of course when she calls the cop and she's drunk and the cops drunk and they're out in the dark what better time than that for the cop to take out his own firearm and to give it to his drunk buddy who of course the cop knows doesn't have enough experience with firearms to actually qualify for a firearms license. Doesn't have a firearms license at that moment in time. Then of course the angle of the shot behind the ear, right? That would be hard to pull off if the two of you are sitting together. So of course Jasmine Harton has a story where the cop said, hey my neck hurts. Can you give me a massage? Right? You need that to make it look like the two haven't been physically intimate because if anyone saw them down by the water in the dark and one is giving the other a neck massage you might say well wow given that this is late at night and they're alone on the water that must be an involved couple well here Jasmine Harton makes it sound like no he's just my good friend the one I feel comfortable calling late at night knowing that he has five kids. And so understand as you see the 48 hours episode just ask yourself if the incident was that innocent why did Jasmine Harton initially lie about it and come up with some far-fetched story involving other people on a boat. Why have the lie? Until of course the cops start asking about the cocaine. Also think about it too. <clears throat> the cops find cocaine in your purse you would think Jasmine would say, look, I didn't shoot the police chief, but yeah, from time to time, I recreationally use cocaine. Right? That's not what she says. Because again, I feel she's been coached. She knows she's a mother. She knows she has two kids. She knows she's in a custody dispute. Admitting to having cocaine hurts you in a custody case. Not only that, having cocaine might hurt you in this case. Right? You're with a member of law enforcement. And, oh, guess what? You happen to have some cocaine. Right? Maybe the cocaine contributed to the shooting. So, of course, Jasmine does the best thing she can. 
She says, hey, look, the Coke wasn't mine. Yeah, I had a few drinks, but I'm not a Coke user. I definitely don't have a cocaine problem. Right? This is a woman whose partner doesn't want her seeing their kids unsupervised. Right? And so, let's just say, she's going to get a slap on the wrist, folks. They're thinking of charging her with an offense of something like negligent homicide, where the maximum sentence is five years. Now, from what I've read, the only people who get five years are wanton criminals. Right? There is a possibility that she gets a slap on the wrist. That she just gets a fine. Doesn't spend any jail time. Let me point out, too, on 48 Hours, they actually make the point that she got incarcerated after the shooting, right? No one paid the $15,000 in bail, even though her partner is a billionaire son, even though they hold a hotel together. No one paid the $15,000 in bail for something like 13 days. Right, so of course, Jasmine is on the show and she's talking about how her cell was roach infested. Oh my goodness, a white woman in jail for 13 days in Belize. As I make this video, don't you think there are people of color who've been in jail in Belize a hell of a lot longer than that? For crimes that didn't involve the death of a top cop, a member of law enforcement? Right, so this case is fascinating. It reeks of privilege. I'm surprised that no one is talking about Jasmine's effort to mislead the cops initially. Right, to come up with a fictional shooter when she knew that she pulled the trigger of a gun. Let me also point out too that there's stories here online talking about Top Cop Jermont and they're hinting that he may have had a drinking problem. Folks, figure out what facts are relevant and what facts aren't. He's the one who got shot. He's not accused of any untoward behavior toward Jasmine Harton. Right, Jasmine admits that she shot him and then he fell on her. And she felt the warmth of his blood on her body. That's how she puts it. Right, focus on the facts. So when the police first question her, she has some story that's not true. She's not talking about an accidental shooting. She's talking about a shooting involving a boat and a shooter. Right? The version of events you're hearing now on 48 Hours is a version that evolves after she's questioned about the cocaine that's in her purse, but we're supposed to believe was not hers. Now since I'm a skeptic on the cocaine story, is it possible that she lied to police when first questioned, right, had some fictional shooter from a boat, and that she's still lying to police when asked about the cocaine in her purse? Right? You know, getting an attorney early in the process certainly helps. This case is exhibit number one. We're supposed to believe she wasn't romantically involved with the guy she calls late at night who then drives an hour to come see her in the dark on the beach while sharing drinks with her. Is so close to her, he takes the gun out of his holster and gives it to her while she, of course, massages his back. 
how many platonic friends do you have like this? Right? Then, of course, there's no argument. He gets shot. She can't say there's an argument. Because then, of course, the shooting looks intentional. Looks like she might have gotten upset and, oh, he ends up shot behind the ear. Right? So, of course, there's no argument. She's massaging his neck, but somehow also has his gun. How many hands does she have, folks? Right? He says, hey, massage my neck. Is it believable? That he then says, hey, while you're massaging my neck, why don't you take this gun? Let's say the order's the reverse. He gives her the gun. Don't you think when he says, hey, can you massage my neck, that's if it was his idea. Don't you think his next line would be, hey, baby, why don't you give me back the gun and massage my neck? Right, folks, think through the sequence. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense. Until you realize that the first lie of the shooter on a boat didn't work. And the cops, of course, found the cocaine in her purse. So then you get this, oh, we're having a pleasant conversation on the beach. Late at night. And I was behind him giving him a massage. And, of course, I also had his gun. And I was giving him the gun back, and oh, when the gun went off, it didn't hit him in the knee. It didn't hit him in the arm. No, it's a fatal head wound that hits him right behind the ear. Folks, I don't know what happened on the beach. I'm not sure if law enforcement has enough to pursue a murder case. But what I do know is the story we're getting from Jasmine Harton doesn't quite make sense. Right? You know, as the top cop, that she doesn't have a gun license. You know that both of you have been drinking. Is that the time to give her your loaded firearm? while she's behind you giving you a massage? Does that make sense? I'm not sure if it does. Anyway, her name is Jasmine Harton. Harton is spelled H-A-R-T-I-N. I encourage people to research this case. It's interesting to have such a developed recitation of the facts after an earlier version of the facts that is completely incongruous that was easily discredited by police that's how I see it let me hear from you I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video thanks for stopping by